Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. In this tutorial we dive into meaningful learning and its types through the eyes of David Ossible and also expand upon concept mapping as proposed by Joseph Novak. Meaningful learning is important to understand as it helps teachers devise courses and course materials to aid learning. It helps teachers design course curriculum to ensure that the students are able to best absorb the training delivered. There's an important discussion at the end of the tutorial. Please stay till the end and participate in it. According to American psychologist David Ossobel, the most important single factor influencing learning is what the learner already knows. So teachers need to ascertain this and teach people accordingly to ensure that the learning process is effective. What about the learning process of new concepts? Ossobel's learning theory emphasizes the central role that concepts and the relationships between concepts play in the learning process. He argues that a person learns an unfamiliar concept by consciously identifying a meaningful relationship between that new concept and one or more concepts that he or she already understands. When the new knowledge encountered is successfully assimilated with existing knowledge, this is termed as meaningful learning. And the process of learning meaningfully is called subsumption. Ozabel's meaningful learning theory or subsumption theory deals with understanding or explaining what meaningful learning is. Sometimes this integration of new knowledge and existing knowledge is weak, leaving students to rote learn as an alternative. Now, rote learning is essentially learning word to word without understanding the meaning and the context of what is learnt. Rote learning essentially involves learning isolated facts, normally associated with learning quickly just for the purpose of reproducing the material in exams. Now, how should teachers aid meaningful learning and ensure that students don't rote learn? According to Ossobel, teachers should provide relevant introductory content before new content is being introduced. Such introductory material should aim to connect the dots between what the learner already knows and the new concepts. These should highlight what's new and important in the new concepts summarize what's already known and orient the learner such that he or she forms a link between known concepts and the new material about to be delivered. Unsurprisingly, Ossobel's learning theory implies that teaching itself is the process of creating situations that fosters and encourages meaningful learning. An important thing to remember is that meaningful learning involves the construction of logical links between new concepts and pre-existing knowledge. The information learnt this way, basically through meaningful learning, therefore will be retained longer in our minds. The process involved is called concept mapping. We will be looking into concept maps later in this tutorial. Before that, we are looking into the types of meaningful learning. There are three types representation learning, concept learning, and proposition learning. Representation learning is basic elementary learning based on symbols and words. Children tend to learn words that have real objects associated with them and mean something to them. Now examples include words like an apple, worm, or milk. So these are words which children can associate with. Concept learning. This happens as a child's vocabulary expands. This is an intermediate level of learning and includes learning words and concepts either through the guidance of a teacher or through one's own exploration. For example, one can be taught about the difference between odd and even numbers by a teacher or people will eventually figure this out on their own. Propositional learning. This is an advanced form of learning wherein you build on your previously acquired knowledge by learning new concepts and integrating it with existing knowledge. This level requires a good foundation of representational and conceptual learning. An example here is learning a new chord on the guitar. 
This requires one to have internalized the basics of playing the guitar. Now, an important concept associated with meaningful learning is the concept of constructing concept maps. Concept maps represent how new knowledge links with existing knowledge. This was a concept proposed by Joseph Novak. Now, let's look into these now. According to Osubel, when several people are exposed to learning a new concept, each person will construct different concept link structures in their mind while involved in the same learning task. A concept map diagram is a diagram produced by a student or a teacher that indicates relationships among concepts in a given area of study. It enables students to create concept links in their minds and thereby facilitates meaningful learning. So a concept map is essentially a diagram created usually by a teacher to indicate relationships between various concepts, including the newer concepts to be introduced. Concept maps often have a hierarchical structure wherein the most general concepts are at the top and the specific topics are at the bottom. There are some simple steps generally involved in creating concepts map. These are as follows. Firstly, identifying concepts in the material to be learned, determining which of these concepts are more general and inclusive, meaningfully linking these concepts to each other, and meaningfully relating these concepts to the concepts you already know. Let's look at an example of a simple concept map. Now, you've got to remember that each person's organization of concepts is unique. So their concept maps will also be unique. So a concept map produced by a teacher for all students will probably not be ideal. And there's no single correct concept map. A concept map should ideally be created by the learners themselves who are ultimately going to understand the concepts for themselves. Now, here is an example of a simple concept map. A concept map looks like a mind map but these are different concepts. Mind maps focus on one idea wherein concept maps connect different ideas and concepts together. These can be considered as advanced mind maps, basically. The below concept map is a tree style concept map. There are, of course, other structures like linear concept maps, circular concept maps, or network types as well. Here, we have a simple concept map starting out with climate change as the concept in terms of meaningful learning theory the new concept targeted or the new concept that is to be delivered is global warming so here we see a connect between the presumed existing knowledge which is climate change and the new knowledge which is to be delivered which is global warming so the new concept once learned becomes a part of the whole and this would help the student retain the new knowledge learned. Now, how can teachers promote meaningful learning? A student can be considered to have learned meaningfully when the new information acquired can be used in solving problems better than before. To promote meaningful learning, teachers can try and create an environment that encourages meaningful learning. Below are some of the ways of doing this taking into account the previous knowledge of students, trying to forge a connection between what's already learned and what's being taught. Concept maps can be used where feasible. Making use of activities that are interesting to students, using examples at all times, and trying to make the examples relatable to one and all. Allowing students to be an active entity during the process and ensuring that they're keeping up as you see here, creating an atmosphere of conducive learning is important to delivering the new knowledge, but it's also a time-consuming process for teachers. It is therefore not always possible to facilitate meaningful learning and deliver the best learning experience with various time constraints that everybody has to play with. The teachers who can still manage it can therefore consider to be good, if not great, teachers. And now it's time for our discussion topic. Please let me know in the comments about the best teaching experience that you've encountered in your life. I'm pretty sure you will remember it as the information you actually acquired in that process will have been retained in your brain. So 
What was so good about the teacher and the teaching experience? Was there a different style of delivery or was there a different structure to the course and the delivery of the subject itself? Let me know in the comment section because as a teacher myself, I would love to find out from you and also learn from your experience. We can all learn from one another here. Okay, I thank you very much uh, for your attendance to this tutorial as always and as always, I would really encourage you to like and share the content in this channel including this tutorial and please take very good care of your own self. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.